everybody to Warriors Post Game Live presented by Toyota, the Hall of Famer Chris Mullen, the Hall of Famer, our Warriors ins insider, Monty Poole. And, fellas, that was a tough one. Charlotte came in desperate, Monty. They got rolled by Orlando last night. They came in shorthanded. No Rozier, yep. no ball. And they come out with the dub, inspired by P.J. Washington and Gordon Hayward. Yeah, they were the hungrier team in the first half. The Warriors had a spell in the third quarter where they really picked it up, got back in the game, got a lead. And you would think that with the Hornets coming on the second night of a back-to-back -back, that they would kind of maybe – you know, be fatigued down the stretch of the fourth quarter, and certainly in overtime, didn't happen. They kept it on and were able to pull it out. Yeah, the Hornets made all the big plays in overtime. I thought the Warriors dominated the second half. Third quarter was 33-18. They mm -hmm. got, got themselves right back in the basketball game. But ultimately, at the free throw line is what the big difference was. Hornets made 24 free throws to the Warriors' 12. <clears throat> uh, the, Warriors commit, the Warriors committed 31 fouls mm. to the Hornets' 14. So that's a huge discrepancy there. Yeah, and about part of that was Plumlee getting fouled, a little hack of Plumlee right, there correct. in the fourth yeah, quarter yeah. to get back into the game. But let's rewind it back to the third quarter where the Warriors did get back into the game. Remember... They were down 15, 65 to 50 here. They insert Jordan Poole and go small, and they end that third quarter with a 31 to 13 run. Jordan Poole was special in that frame as well, getting Wiggins rolling there. But Jordan Poole, inspired play offensively and defensively, Monty. I just thought that throughout that stretch, they played with an energy that they didn't display in the first half and early, even early in the third quarter. You look back at that and you see they out rebounded the, the, the Hornets after being out rebounded in the first half, 15 to 8. Uh, they, had, they had more assists than the Hornets. They were, they were simply a better team. If they played half the game, like they played those nine minutes, they win by 20. Yeah, I think what we saw in the third quarter, Bonte and, and Monty, was, and Steve Kerr has often talked about it, they tied their beautiful offense flow to the energy and effort on a defensive end. You saw Jordan Poole dive for a loose ball. Uh, the basketball was bouncing around. They made some tough shots. Um, but I just thought overall they tied their offense and defense together and they dominated that third quarter. And, you know, at the end of the fourth, it was 107-107. Yep. And at the, to that point, the Warriors were making all the winning plays. Yeah. So you got to give the Hornets credit. Yeah. They're shorthanded. They go into overtime and outscore the Warriors, uh, was it 13-6 to six in, yep. in overtime? So give seven. them a lot of credit. No that was like, this was a gut check win for the Hornets. Yeah. You know, they really yeah. showed it. It's a big win for them, their first at home this season. Let's take a look at the crunch time tape in the fourth quarter. We pick it up with four minutes left in regulation. Warriors down five here. Steph Kerr with a big time three at the top of the key to get the Warriors rolling. And we thought, fellas, that they would seize control here. Again, another big shot by Jordan Poole. He was just electric tonight with 24 points off the bench, four assists, 10 to 20 from the floor, including four three-pointers there. But Draymond Green, he was also attacking defensively as well. He got a couple layups here as we see. Steph Curry going right down the lane for a finger roll here. But Draymond Green made some big-time winning plays here down the stretch, Monty. No, Draymond is one of those guys that you really need out there when you're trying to win a game. And for the most part, he did exactly that. There were some defensive breakdowns, breakdowns later, but, but in the meat of the game, Draymond was there doing things at both ends of the court. Yeah, it's still there, setting up Steph Curry. Nice screen here, Mully, as Curry's looking for a shot. Did he find Steph uh, Draymond Green there? Of course, the Wiggins for the baseline dunk. And the Warriors are up four here with a minute two left. We thought they were going to be going to Detroit with the win. Well, we, we were getting ready to interview Steph Curry <laughs> post game, But that's what I'm saying. The, the Warriors made all the winning plays to get to this point. Again, solid def yep. defense here by Dennis Smith. Most guys are going to leave their feet, be over-anxious about Steph Curry's ball fake. So at 107-107, I still thought the Warriors had momentum going into overtime. Charlotte Hornets took that game away from him. Should Steph Curry attack there, maybe try to get to the lane? Because he does have that mid-range and that floater. I think he had the option to do that. But I think with Steph, you know, he's going to go with what he knows would work. And in this instance, Dennis Smith Jr., maybe a, a year ago, would have bit on that. Right. Didn't bite this time. Draymond had 12 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, a great game. Uh, they found him for wide open layups and crucial po points of their game in the fourth quarter. I thought they played a really good game. They, did, they buried themselves a little bit of a hole in the first half. Yeah. But the third and fourth quarter, I thought they played really well. Um, so I, I really have to give Charlotte credit in that overtime. They made some big plays, and those are players that have not played in those situations. All right, let's look at the overtime tape here where the Warriors come in tied 107 apiece with the Charlotte Hornets. And really, they struggled to get their footing in overtime. Took them a while to score here. And you see Draymond, though, with the layup there, the first bucket of OT with just over three minutes left. Jordan Poole with a nice nifty pass to Draymond as the Warriors go up two again with 252 left. But then again, as Willie Amani has said, they made all the winning plays. McDaniels, a nice 
player. Again, you heard Fitz on the broadcast. 52nd overall pick in the 2020 draft. He comes off the bench with 12 points, 10 rebounds. You see Dennis Smith Jr. there with a nice pass. And that was a breakdown by the vets yes. defensively there in overtime. And P.J. Washington. 31 points, seven rebounds, but you saw that defensive breakdown there, Mully, in overtime. That was on the veterans right there, kind of knowing your man. Clay got lost, Draymond, and you see P.J. Washington with the well, layup. Yes, a defensive breakdown, but also pretty good execution by the Charlotte Hornets. That was mm -hmm. a big-time three-point shot by McDaniels, mm -hmm. and that was a tough pass for, for Dennis Smith Jr. to get into uh, P.J. Washington. So good execution. Again, I think the Warriors, they're still ironing out their, their defensive communication. Uh, Steve Kerr still searching for the right lineups he wants to close with. Uh, we didn't see James Wiseman at all in the second yeah. half. He got three, three early fouls three in the fouls. first half. Yeah, he didn't rebound the ball well right, at all. Um, yeah. But still trying to figure out that rotation where Steph, Clay, and Draymond can get their rest. And get, Steph came back with eight minutes and ten seconds left. Right. A little early for him. No yeah. doubt. Look at that, third, that big shot by McDaniels, though. He had five, six feet in front of him, mm. you know, which in late stages of a close game, you shouldn't have that kind of open space. He did. So you're right. The breakdowns were mostly by the veteran players, players who've been through this before. So these are easily fixable things, but they cost you in a game like this, especially when you dig a hole in the first half. And you saw that from both teams. You saw those layups that Draymond Green was getting late, mm -hmm. late in the fourth quarter and even overtime. It's overcommitment to the basketball. You want to stop the ball. It's the weak side rotation. And that's... That's something that is innate. It's, it's, a, it's a rhythm and flow thing, and most veterans are good at that. For the Warriors, that's where the young unit's trying to get to where they're aware not only playing the basketball straight up, but also the weak side defense. Yeah, you know, Steph won't be happy about the performance in the loss. He wants to win, but individually, he's on a heater right now. In five of the six games so far, he scored at least 30 points. He grabbed 11 rebounds tonight, six assists, 10 to 22 from the floor. Didn't have the three ball going, just three of 13 there, but he made some big time shots in the second half. And this is the 15th time in Steph Curry's career in which he scored 30 or more points and Brad Turner more rebounds. Monty, he's off to a hellacious start this season. Yeah, this is as good as it gets right now. And I think those 11 rebounds, and in the first half, the Warriors were out rebounded by 10. So if you're Stephen Curry, you're thinking, okay, what do I need to do? I mean, we got to do some things on it. So what does he do? He attacks the glass like nobody else. And so he's always been one of the better rebounding guards in the league. But in this game, when they were getting killed on the glass, he stepped up and gave him some there. So. So six games into the season, he scored 30 more in five games. Mm -hmm. The last time he did that was the 2015-2016 season where he's a unanimous MVP. Mm. <laughs> What's really impressive to me, though, Bonte, hey Monte, you know, you hear Festus always said it was a short off season. They went to Japan. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's affected everybody <laughs> but Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah. He's starting his 14th season. Right. This, this guy is incredible. Yeah. At homecoming there, it looks like.